why'd you, uh, decide, why'd you guys decide to trade Bradley Roby? Well, it's still ongoing. It, it's not official yet. Uh, there have been talks. Uh, talks are still going on right now, and it's not official. Well, you know, Danny's been a quality player in this league for a long time. Uh, I happened to have Danny back in Philadelphia when, uh, a while back. I know what he's all about. Uh, he fits the mold. We've had uh, Anthony Miller, who's been our slot guy, has been hurt. And basically we wanted to make sure we had some depth and another guy to be able to play that position if uh, Anthony's not able to play. And Danny fits that mold. What is, uh, if the Bradley Rosey trade does, what, what does that do to you guys in your, in your secondary, your depth there, and how do you guys play that sort of address it? Bradley was not going to play this game anyway. So basically the guys that we're playing with right now are the guys that we're going with. We're comfortable with those guys. And uh, uh, basically we've been going with those guys all training camp, and uh, we feel comfortable with that. And then we've, we've brought in some other guys that uh, hopefully that will give us some depth at that position also. David, when Nick spoke to us last week, he said uh, he gives success, or he's going to be able to throw a prism more of being process-oriented than results-oriented this season. How do you get the players to buy into that way of thinking? I can get it from a well, players don't ever look at it like that. Players always look at it as if everything is now, you know. Uh, every time we go out to play a game, they're going out to win. They feel like the guys that they're playing with right now are good enough to do that with, and, and that's how they see it. They don't kind of look at it from the big picture as sometimes maybe you do from an administrative standpoint or uh, that kind of thing. They, they, they look at it as if they're going to play and they're going out to try to win the game, and they look at it and they see it that way. Well, we don't really think one. We only think the one way, and the one way is that every time we go out to play, we're going out to win, and we feel like the guys that we're going out there to play with are good enough to win with, and uh, we approach it that way. And then it's never brought up. It's never, it's never even an issue. And David, when, when uh, you know, he was Bradley Rubin would have back next week, and you know, started him for the preseason, whenever you're marrying those two ideas between the team's message and that, how, how do you respond to well, again, uh, we feel like when we make those decisions, we feel like we make those best, what's best for the football team, and we feel like looking at the big picture and looking at where we are right now, that uh, if this thing goes through, that we feel like that it was the best thing that we needed to do for our football team. David, how optimistic are you about Marcus Cannon might possibly be available for Charlie Hay coming back from the post? Charlie will not be back this week. Uh, Marcus is. We'll, we'll we'll see this week how he's doing, and we're hoping that he's going to be able to play. David, uh, you and Urban Meyer have taken completely different paths to your first NFL head coaching job. What do you think about him and the way he's got to the NFL? Well, I mean, obviously, he's been one of the best coaches in the history of college football through his career. Uh, I've kind of followed him uh, through his career from uh, when he first started, uh, even back in Bowling Green and back in Utah, and. Uh, uh, happened to spend four years with one of his players, uh, Alex Smith, in Kansas City. And uh, I know the kind of coach he is and uh, uh, got a lot of respect for him. And, uh, again, you know, he, he he went about it his way. And, you know, the way it went, went, went for me was completely different for him. But we're both here, and uh, I'm hoping to go out and, uh, you know, whip his butt this week. Will Watson be on the uh, He will not play this week. At what point do you think that Danny will be well, we're not really sure yet. It all depends on Anthony Miller. If Anthony is healthy this week, then uh, Anthony hopefully will play this week. So Sunday will be the second time you and Urban Meyer have been on opposite sidelines. Do you remember the first time? It's been a while. Well, I, I've never really uh, coached against him, per se, in college. But it's just the fact that uh, uh, when he was coaching in college, I happened to to be a part of a staff that had one of his players, Alex Smith, who uh, when he was there. But I do know about him. I, I do know about him. As a matter of fact, I know some of our players on our team will get mad at me at this, but uh, especially the Michigan guys. But I've kind of been an Ohio State fan for going way back. Well, I guess there was a game in 1990 when you were at Utah and he was at Colorado State. Do you remember this? I don't remember that. That's a way, that's way, way back. But uh, I do remember being at UTEP, and I know it was a long time ago. But I do not remember it. Uh, I'm trying to think. Uh, I'm not. I can't remember if we won or we lost. Uh, uh, that, uh, Urban he won. Okay, uh, he's won a whole bunch, so that's not surprising. <laughs>
Well, you know, Chart's been a Pro Bowl caliber player in this league before. Uh, he hasn't played at all this this preseason, but uh, uh, you know that, that's always a challenge. But I, I feel like with what we do with the guys we got back there in the secondary, that uh, you know they'll hold their own. Uh, um, you know, we we respect who they are and we respect those, those guys, and uh, you know we're just going to play the game the way it unfolds. Well, this will be the first day we get them out there, so uh, we'll just see. We'll just see. We'll just have to wait and see how it goes. Dave, what is Charles Amenahu third on the depth chart? I, I, you know, that depth chart, uh, I guess, basically is a depth chart that came out of our uh, our media thing. Uh, that depth chart basically is not, I guess, what I would call an update. I know this. Charles Amenahu will be playing in this ball game. Will be playing a bunch. Do I don't think, think that's a. I don't think that's a big deal. What do you think about his performance in It's been excellent. Uh, I'm very happy with where Charles has been. Plus, that whole defensive line. You know, there's there's eight or nine guys right there that will play uh, in this ball game. Coach, after the departure of Bradley Roby, will you guys continue to shop some of the more established veterans around before the season opens? Well, I don't think we're shopping anybody. I think what happens is is that you know people make calls, people you know try to get their team better. We try to get our team better and. You know, people have different conversations, and sometimes you, you know, things come up that that may work for both of you. And if it does, then you make a make a deal. But as far as shopping, we're not shopping anybody. Coach, what's the status of Kobe Bryant and Trevor? Excuse me. What's the status of your kicker? Uh, he will not kick this week. Who will kick? Uh, we're not sure yet. We'll find out this week. So that injury turned out to be worse than pulling muscle. It, it it looks like it. He's not ready this week. All right. Thanks, Coach. Welcome.